I'm so excited for today's video. <laughs> hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be testing out the Dior Birds of a Feather collection. This is Dior's newest collection. Oh my goodness, I'm really excited about this. So let's get into it. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. Um, I love Dior and I feel like in the last year, year and a half-ish, Dior has really stepped up their game. Now, they aren't as consistent as I would like for them to be, which is why I picked up everything in this collection almost, but for the most part, I think they've started coming out with more interesting collections and collections that really speak to me as well as some of my absolute favorite formulas. And this collection looked so cute. I am a sucker for embossments. <laughs> I'm really into this. So let's get over what I picked up first. Keep in mind, I haven't even at the point that I'm filming this swatch these yet. This is a true first impressions. As soon as I got them, I just, I took photos first because the embossments were too pretty, but I, I just, I want to throw it on. I did not pick up everything from the collection. There's one item in particular that I didn't pick up at all. These are the Rouge Graphist. They're supposed to be lip pencils is what it says. There are three shades. They look weird. Like I feel like these look like they would be eyeliners, but on the website it says it's a lipstick pencil, but then I read on a blog somewhere that these were eyeliners. I don't know, but there's a plum shade, a vibrant coral, a vibrant nude. Honestly, I don't think these were even on the site when I ordered the collection, but I'm not mad about missing out on them, you know. I'm <laughs> That wasn't the main show of this collection. There are two eyeshadow palettes in this collection. I, of course, had to pick up both. Listen, I love some Dior eyeshadows and then I hate some Dior eyeshadows. So we'll see where these fall. I'm hoping these are in line with their regular formula, but they look so beautiful. They also had two blushes in the collection and blush is my go-to from Dior. I've never had a blush that has failed me. So I picked up both of them. Also in the collection are three different nail polishes. And normally I wouldn't pick up a nail polish. As you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't take care of these suckers, okay? I get comments reminding me. I just, I don't like taking care of my nails. My nails don't hold nail polish for more than two days, even if I get them professionally done. I don't know what's wrong with my fingers, okay? I've, they've just never been able to hold polish. But I, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> so there were three shades. I only allowed myself to pick up one because they're beautiful, beautiful duochrome shades. So let me quickly, we'll just get started talk about the nail polishes. There were three shades, like I said, and of course I got the craziest color, which is Nightbird. Now these are $28 each. That's obviously a lot for a nail polish. But how could a girl say no to this? There also is Early Bird, which is a platinum with an iridescent shimmer. It's like, it looks pink and gold. And then Wild Wings is like an eggplant with a gold, but I had to get Nightbird, the blue to green, I put two coats on two fingers. <laughs> I don't know. And as you can see, it was not a very good application. I know I need to do a lot as far as my nail care. Honestly, I'm embarrassed to draw attention to them, but I'm fully aware of my lack of nail care. But yeah, it's an interesting color on the nails. I don't know that I love it. I think it's a lot prettier in the bottle, but the nail polish is in here. So fun. They are limited edition. I, I don't know. I had to. I had to. Okay, so I got that. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's get into the goods. We're gonna do cheeks first, and then we'll do the eyeshadow palettes. We'll save the best for last. Though, honestly, I'm a little bit more excited for the cheek products, I'm not gonna lie. Everything in this collection, by the way, is limited edition. So, let me get that out of the way. <laughs> so this collection came with two very different blushes. Each blush is $45 each, which, when I said that out loud, wow, that's expensive. But I will say Dior has never failed me when it's come to blush. I've always loved their blushes so much. So when you get the blush, they are going to come in a velvet sleeve, which keep them if you're ever moving or traveling, you're gonna want these to protect your compacts, which I never keep them. So 
I just reminded myself that I'm moving, so I'm going to start <laughs> keeping these. And they also come with a cheap little brush that I only use in emergency cases. They're always very annoying when you open them and they fall out and you just want to throw them away. But again, emergencies. So what I love about these blushes are the embossments. My nails are going to bother you this whole video now. <laughs> but you can see they are feathers and this one is 468 nude glide honestly this is a little bit deeper in person i feel like on the photo on the website it almost looked a little bit more highlighter y to me like i felt like it looked really light definitely it looks deeper and it has more of like a rosy tone to it in person the other shade that they have in this is coral flight which is a vibrant coral i feel like it's more vibrant than it's picking up on camera but this is slightly more more pink in person. It doesn't look quite as orange red as it does on the website, but this one looks like it has a little bit less shimmer than the nude shade. It also has that beautiful embossment, but wow! I really love that they came out with a really bright, fun blush that's just gonna look fantastic on deeper skin tones, and then a perfect nude blush for lighter skin tones, or for everybody. I'm gonna put both on my cheeks. I have stalled on swatching these because the embossments are so pretty. I've gotten my pictures, so uh, let's do it. We're gonna do the nude shade first. These, by the way, are made in France and they have a 12 month shelf life. So here we go. The nude shade does have some glitters to it that are evident even on my finger swatch, you can see. <gasps> I'm gonna love this. This looks so pretty. So here is what nude looks like, really gorgeous. But again, it does have those loose, fine glitter particles. Let's take a look at Coral Flight now. This one definitely has more of a matte finish. Here's what it looks like on my finger. It looks like I'm gonna need to go very light with my brush because she popping. Looks really, really fun. Let's apply now, let's get to business. I think my brush off, making sure there's no color on there. I always get asked about this brush. This is from Flower beauty it's an awesome brush i don't even know what it's called but it's just a blush brush from flower beauty let's do the nude shade first so i'm gonna tap my brush in a few times you might want to tap it off because you do get a little bit of fallout here we go i love 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 the tone of this i just went in for a second dip and it is popping on my cheek it doesn't look quite as light as I was worried it would be, but you can see those individual glitters on the cheek, which I don't really love, if I'm being honest. Unbothered by it, but I would prefer this formula without the glitter particles because it does look like there's glitter on your face, and I don't think it's going to come off. <laughs> but it's a really beautiful shade, but the only off-putting thing is those glitters. But other than that, I really like this shade. I think it is beautiful. Let me turn the light down just a little bit so you can see the color a bit better. Oh, there you go. Really pretty. All right, let me wipe my brush. Whew, I'm really excited about this shade. I think this shade is awesome. I don't have too many colors like this in my collection. I tend to shy away from them for obvious reasons, uh, but let's do it. Let's have some fun. I'm excited about this one. Definitely want to tap off my brush for this, and here we go. <gasps> I love it. I always say this in all my videos, but the lighting's being weird because it's a weird time of day. I love this. There's not glitter on my face. If you see any, it's left over from the other shade probably. It is not too bright on me. I was worried, what a fun color for summer. And I definitely think, yep, you can build this up. So this is gonna be very versatile for a lot of skin tones. 10 out of 10. This is my favorite blush of the two. Obviously it's a lot brighter, so it's not gonna be everybody's cup of tea, but I think it is so fun. I don't have another color like this in my collection. The formulation is as beautiful as I expected it to be. It doesn't have those glitter particles. I'm a fan of this. Okay, very cool. I think both blushes are nice, but if you don't like the glitter aspect of that nude shade, I don't recommend that nude shade, but I like everything else about it except for that, which is a big thing. But I do love the coral shade. All right, let's get into the main show here. Both of the eyeshadow quints. So these are not cheap. They are $65 each, but that's what you expect with your. These didn't come with a sleeve. Don't their eyeshadow palettes usually come with a sleeve? Not that big of a deal, but just something that I know 
noticed. These are made in Italy. It's the typical format of the Dior quince. However, you can see they also have the feather embossment. I mean, this sells me right here. I love when Dior embosses their shadows. So this one's gonna be the more neutral one neutral. Uh, this is Early Bird. It has shades of brown, pink, beige, gold. I see some plum in here. Side note, these do have a six month shelf life, which is very short for an eyeshadow palette. Let me grab another Dior palette. Huh, okay. I just looked at a few of my other Dior palettes. I don't know why this has never caught my attention, but they all have a six month shelf life. Anyways, that doesn't really bother me. Let's swatch this first one, Early Bird here. I just want to know what formula is going to be because Dior has some bad eyeshadow formulas, but they also have some very good ones. I'm, I'm letting the intensity uh, build up here. Okay, so I have the first three shades swatched. It's a drier formula. It's not going to be creamy like a Natasha Denona or a Pat McGrath, and it's not super pigmented, but it's a perfect level of pigmentation for luxury formulas, and it swatched beautifully. I love this shade right here, this mustard shade, and it's actually more of a satin shade. I think this is a the perfect formula for mature skin because it's more matte than satin, but it's not a drying matte. And you can see we have two metallics here. I guess more so shimmers. They aren't exactly metallic. And then these guys are also metallic, but they have a little bit more glitter particles in them than the other two shimmers. Very fun color story. These aren't swatching like the bad formula from Dior that I don't like, so that is a very good sign. I like how these swatch. I don't love how these swatch, but we will see how they apply to the eyelid. Let's just do it. We're gonna do it over the bright blush, why not? With no direction at all, what I wanna do, I'm gonna go into the mustard shade. This one surprised me by swatch because I was not expecting it to be matte. For some reason, I thought it was gonna be shimmer. These are like a baked formula, kind of a gelée -ishy. So you're not gonna get any fallout, which is not what their typical formula is in their permanent line. Their permanent line shadows, you do have fallout. They're a bit more powdery. These are that baked formula. And it's not giving me the pigmentation that I was really hoping for. I was hoping to get a bit more, but it's working. It's definitely showing up, but it's not what I was hoping for. Run this along the lower lash line. Okay, this look isn't gonna be all that because I really just wanna play with the formulas. So do keep that in mind. We're gonna go in with this metallic glittery kind of plum shade and let's see if this can add some depth and smokiness. It's doing a nice job. It's nothing too crazy pigmentation wise. It's not intimidating. Sometimes with these dark shades that can be intimidating, you wanna be extra careful with how much you apply, how hard you dip in. And it's pulling more grayish black than it is plum. I'm finding that I am losing some of the metallic purple that you see. I think, you know, if I were to take my finger and apply it all over the lid, then you would see what you see in the pan. But as far as a blending shade in the outer V. It really just adds that depth. So I do like that versatility here. If you do want a purpley kind of smoky eye, you're going to have to use your fingers. If you want to use this as something for depth, it can blend out and it's not too metallic. You can see a little bit of those glitter particles, but nothing too insane. So I like the versatility in that shadow. Let's use the reddish shade right here. I'm going to put this in the middle of the lower lash line. I like that. You see how pigmented it still is despite using a blending brush? I'm gonna use a packer brush. This is a rougher brush. And we're gonna take a little bit more of that red. Oh, this is nice. And it's really pretty and sparkly. Don't wanna take up too much of the lid. Thumbs up for that shade. I really like that one. Now we're gonna take the pinkish shade. We're gonna put that over the rest of the lid. Interesting mixture of colors here, I have to say. To me, it's not intuitive what kind of look I want to create. I can see different looks I want to create using different shadows. Like I would pair these two together, maybe actually these three and the purpley pinky shade together. But I think as far as just 
looking at it, it's difficult for me to come up with a look that I feel inspired to create involving all five of the shadows. Obviously, I'm doing it right now. You know, I'm not loving it. <laughs> it's just what I had to do to try all of the shadows. And the mustard shade is kind of blended away. If you were to buy this, honestly, I wouldn't get too complicated with the looks. Use it in a simple form. I don't like how this mustard shade is blending away. All right, now we're going to take the lightest shade and I'm just going to use that right here. Really great inner corner highlight. Highlights. Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, I love that shade. Beautiful. Okay, this look, she's not cute. <laughs> you can definitely get a cute look with this palette, but all five shades I feel like aren't as cohesive as I would like for them to be, but that does add room for creativity. Or maybe I just I, I don't have very good creativity today. I like this palette. I don't love it. It's not a 100% solid formula. It's not as good as a formula that you would find in their regular luxury line, but it is a good formula, especially for their limited edition collections, because I do find their limited edition collection formulas to lack pigment and have a hard time showing up on the eyes. That's not the case with this really, except for this shade, just kind of blended away. To use this, I think to get to the, the prettiest looks is to break it down into as little shades as possible. Maybe use two to three as opposed to all five. Just a suggestion, obviously do whatever you want. Not loving this palette, but not disliking it either. We're gonna finish up with the one that I was most excited about anyways, so don't disappoint me. This is the shade Nightbird. Goes with my nail polish color, so these are iridescent shades of gold, orange, and green. This is the fun one. So let's swatch it. I'm so excited. This is the one that I knew I had to have. Three shades on the fingers. A little underwhelming, but let's keep going. Not what I was hoping for. Like, I, I definitely need to, uh, let's layer it up. Let's just test her out. A second layer of swatching looks better. You can kind of see the colors more. All of them are shimmery. None of them are matte. The least shimmery shade is going to be the peach, but you can see it definitely is still a satin shade. Not impressive swatches like I was hoping, but I think they'll probably be pretty washes on the lid, but let's see. This color story, though, I do feel inspired by. I already kind of have a direction that I want to go with it. And I feel like the looks, it's just more cohesive to me. We're going to take the peach shade in the center. We're going to use this as our transition shade. Pretty sheer, as you can see, but I am using a blending brush. And it does have that shimmer, but it's nothing crazy. It definitely is still workable as a crease color. We're going to start off with this bluish green color right here. I'm going to do something similar to the style of what I did with the first look, obviously just with different colors. This one is the deepest shade in the palette. I am using a blending brush, so it's not packing on very vibrant, but it's still doing a nice job, all things considered. We're gonna go into the blue purple shifty shade. So this one is a nice iridescence. I don't know if you can catch it on camera, but in some lights it's blue, some lights it's purple. Let's put this on the center of my lid. Now this is a shade that I probably want to use wet. That's the vibe that it's giving me, but sophistication of a luxury shadow, I'm gonna keep it with that by keeping my brush dry. Very pretty. I like this one so far. I think I'm liking it more than the first palette that we use. You wipe off my brush. Okay, let's go green now. I love this shade. This one's so pretty. These shadows would look beautiful over a black base. So if you're really looking to intensify the shadow or do something a little bit more unique, put a black base underneath. You will thank me. Excuse the lighting going in and out. Okay, let me just blend the edges a little bit. It's okay if they kind of morph into one another, not that big of a deal. Just going to re-up on all of the shades. This is definitely my favorite of the two. I'm going to use this shade along the outer third of my lower lash line. Just, I'm interested to see how it works with a blending brush and how it looks. Not bad. I'm gonna go into the deepest shade now and kind of layer over top to use our green shade. Finally, we're gonna finish off with this gold shade right here. It's a little bit like of a yellowy green. Beautiful, the perfect highlight shade for this quint. <laughs> Again, I would definitely say not my best work, 
just trying to get a feel for the shadows, see how they would look on the eyelid. But I definitely prefer this palette over here more than the palette over here. I think it's definitely unique for Dior. So if you are a Dior collector, this is the one that I would recommend to have in your collection. I'm going to put on the rest of my makeup and then I will be back to give you my final thoughts on everything in the collection. All put together here is how everything is looking. Nothing like lashes to really make me love an eye look. All of a sudden I really love this look. <laughs> like a lot. And I love this palette. I love how sophisticated this is for being blue and green. Oh. I'm loving it. Anyways, something I did forget to mention previously was my shipping experience. So I did order from the Dior website and it didn't come in the usual white box that it comes in, which is one of the main reasons, I'll be honest, why I order from Dior. I just love that luxury experience. It just came in a big box filled with the white paper that they normally put in. It wasn't special at all, to be honest, that all of the products were just thrown in. Now, because of all of that white paper, I did not feel that anything was going to break, but I did want to share with you the sample that I got. I'm so excited. I love mini perfumes. I love going to antique stores and looking at the baby perfumes and look at my sample. I got the cutest Dior. It's called Vanilla Diorama. It smells delightful. Me and my mom love this scent. I've never smelled it before until this sample. This is a perfume that I honestly am thinking about buying the full size of. It smells beautiful, but I love how Dior always has the most adorable little baby perfumes. I gave them all, but side note, I normally don't care for perfume samples, but this one smells delicious. Back to the main products, my final thoughts. The superstar of this collection. The number one item that I recommend is this coral blush. It is amazing. It is versatile. It is unique. I'm obsessed with it. I think it goes great with the collection. It's my favorite. Now that being said, I do still really enjoy the nude blush. I think it is really pretty and the glitters don't bother me, but it's not something I would add. So I really enjoy the color of this though, but that coral is, it's unique. It's everything I would want in a limited edition collection. As far as the eyeshadow palettes, I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of this one. I, it's not worth $65 to me, if that makes sense. You know, it's fine, but I'm not as into the color story anyways. I never really was. I can definitely create some beautiful looks with this, especially once I get to sit down and create a look that I actually have in my head right now. But as far as a recommendation for you guys, I don't recommend it. But my mind is changing on this one. I really like this one, the Nightbird. Um, yeah, it's not gonna be really pigmented, really vibrant, but it's gonna give you a, a haze of just beautifulness. I don't know, you can see. If you like this kind of look, I think you will really like this. I love the finish that it's giving. I think it's sophisticated, but still really fun. So this one is definitely my favorite of the eyeshadow quince. So I do like this one. I do like the coral blush, but as far as are they actually as good as the permanent line shadow formula? No, they are not better than that formula, but they are better than a lot of the other formulas that I've tried from eyeshadows that Dior has come out with, particularly recently with those Trio Bleak shadows and the Dior Crucio palette that came out. That was a Gelé formula with like no pigment to it. These are better than those. I, I can't talk too much about the nail polish. I kind of just bought this for funsies, but it's real funsies. I think this is one of my favorite parts of the collection, honestly. Like this is the most fun thing ever. Anyways, that is my first impressions on the Dior Birds of a Feather. Is that what it's called? Collection? <laughs> If I mess that up, I am so sorry. Let me know your thoughts down below. I'm excited to see that Dior had fun with this collection and it really showed. Are you planning on picking anything up? That is all I have for today's video. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.